Welcome back to the studio, Jerry. All right, we're back. You're back. Made it back I've in one back piece. Here. Yeah, you've been here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Oh, it's so much better when the office is not empty. Yes, yes. It was good to be uh, out of town for a couple of weeks, but it's definitely family? good to be back. Good. You're teasing good. us with pictures of all the lobsters. I ate lobsters a couple of times up there, yeah. I should start including pictures and stuff like that in the show, but I don't think yeah. anybody cares. But <laughs> <laughs> Jerry uh, I had a big gathering around the table with all the lobsters you could eat. Yeah. A couple times. Oh, yeah, you did Lobster Fest, events, too. Lobster Fest. I and, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. You've been gone forever, man. Yeah, my cholesterol is probably not liking me right now, but, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> ah, lobster's good for you. All right. What do you got for us this week, man? Middle of September. Man. Um, so, yeah, we are pretty much in the middle of the most volatile season of the year. And uh, as we always say, volatility goes in both directions. So, huge down week last week, big up week so far this week. We're back up to bumping against uh, the previous all-time highs. It's uh, it's pretty fascinating. So we'll look at what happened this week, uh, a recent Facebook post, and then the what everybody's talking about is what happens. You know, we're all expecting the Fed to cut rates next week. The big question is whether it's going to be a 25 uh, basis points, but a 0.25% cut or a 50 basis point cut. Um, uh, 25, they, I think everybody, it's, it's pretty much 100%, right? Everybody thinks that the, they're going to cut uh, at a minimum 25%. they are going to ease into it, probably. Yeah. So so depending on how they look at the data, uh, there, there's a pretty high percentage that they, they cut 50 basis points. Um, the downside of that is it looks like the Fed sees something in the data that makes them worried that the economy is, is really actually worse than people think it is and so they cut rates to try to start to put a floor under what's you know they expect to be falling stock prices um so that can that can cause that alone can cause stock prices to go down um there's no way to know like nobody has a crystal ball nobody knows what the fed's going to do or what the market's going to react to when the fed does it so all you can do is wait and respond to what the market actually does but the, the thing is everybody has an opinion So what I want to do is go back and do a chart of what actually happens when the Fed actually does begin a rate cutting cycle, right? Uh, And then TSP charts. All right. So what happened this week? Monday, we get consumer credit data. Um, S&P was up pretty big, uh, 1.16% after it had declined 1.73% on Friday, the Friday before that. So a lot of volatility. Uh, And I have this bolded, this one and this one for a reason. We're gonna we're gonna kind of look look at both of them on the next couple slides. But so Tuesday we get this uh, small business optimism index, and then the S and P's up you know almost half a percent on Tuesday. Uh, and Tuesday night we had the, the Trump Harris debate. Um, I don't think that changed anybody's mind. It, it didn't do much to move the market the next day. Mortgage rates dropped to six point two nine percent from six point four three percent. So the question there is going to be does that uh, the idea historically, right, is when rates come down, housing prices go up, right? They And in the reverse, right, when rates go up, housing prices are supposed to come down, but that didn't happen on this last cycle. Yeah, especially around here. It didn't happen it, anywhere. It didn't, yeah. it didn't happen at all. I was like, I've been flat out amazed. Yeah. I mean, we live in one of the wealthiest, wealthiest isn't the right word, you know. Uh, it's, <laughs> Highest it's income. Income, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's not, there are wealthy people here, 100%, yeah. Yeah. and they kind of skew it with all of us government workers, but Loudoun County, Fairfax County, Virginia, both of those are like the two, two of the richest. They use that word. They get paid a lot. Yeah. They Lots of a income, a lot of money coming in. Right. And so our housing has just gone skyrocket, yeah. even with all these rates and stuff. And now, you know, all the homeowners are loving that, but like there's, it's got to break at some point. It can't. Well, so this is the big, the big thing. I think I told you, um, uh, Carol from, I think her name's Carol that the, uh, Shark Tank, um, tall blonde, blonde yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, sh- she is buying up Baltimore uh, with, on the idea that as soon as, if, if the Fed gets down one percentage point, uh, home prices should skyrocket, she thinks. And, and she's buying up all these distressed properties in Baltimore. So it, it, it comes down to like what that, the question that I just asked there, like if, if the Fed starts lowering rates, mortgage rates come down, um, does that make home prices go up? And if it does, that that 
may increase or decrease the amount of people that are willing to sell. I mean, you still if now because everybody's locked into a, a pretty low rate right, mortgage, right. right? So even if housing prices go up another ten percent, if you're locked into a low rate, um, even if rates come down, you're not going to. If you wanted to move, you're still buying into a higher rate than you than you got it before COVID. So there's no guarantees to any of this stuff. You know? Yeah. At some point, your personal circumstances, like, force you to move in certain parts of the country, yeah. like around here. Yeah. Where we know so many people that, like, they they got to move no matter what because they're getting, you know, moved around with yeah. the government or as a contractor or whatever. Now, in other parts of the country, you can probably stay in your home for 30 years, and yeah. that, none of that affects that where you work, maybe. But, um, but yeah, it's it's um, that's, a, that's a wild play to go into Baltimore and buy up everything because it could definitely go against you. I mean, we've seen both sides of that for yeah. that particular area, but uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting, though. Pe- people are making big bets in both both directions. Um, and so Wednesday turned out to be a pretty volatile day, right? The S&P was up 1.7%, but there was a 3% intraday move. I mean, it was way, way down at, at one point during the day on Wednesday and then reversed and came back up and closed up uh, a little over 1% for the day. And then PPI and jobless claims came out both of them were a little bit higher than, than analysts expected, and the S&P was up three-quarters of a percent on that day. Um, so PPI and jobless claims being better than analysts expected goes against the idea of the Fed cutting by 50%, right? So all these things, either either the data supports that, that inflation is still in the system, which makes it hard for the Fed to cut rates, or the data suggests that the economy is weakening, which helps the Fed cut, cut rates. So it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how the market responds no matter what the Fed does next week. And then Michigan Consumer uh, Sentiment Report came in. Um, it had bottomed in July, and it was up It's up for um, August and September. Uh, and then as of noon, roughly where we're, we're doing this podcast, the market's up about a half a percent. So bumping up against pretty close to... Um, what is it? Fifty six, fifty or so is the is the high, and it's been there. We've hit it ten or twelve times since since early July. So getting above that level would be a big deal. And if we roll over from here, I wouldn't be surprised either. So, um, so consumer credit, okay. Um, <laughs> this is for, this is a Fed Federal Reserve report. Okay, total consumer credit in the U.S surged by $25.5 billion in July, significantly higher double the, the $12 billion increase that was expected. Um, so it marked the largest credit growth since November 2022, uh, driven by both revolving and non-revolving debt. So revolving credit, which is basically credit cards, um, climbs $10.6 billion. Okay, So this, th- this is the, whole, the, the combined of basically credit cards and car loans. I mean, it's, it's revolving debt and non-revolving. So car loans, like dishwashers, whatever, anything you take out credit for that is is non-revolving, it's, it's fixed. It's a huge move up, right? So you can look at that and say, okay, um, people are still willing to take out loans and the banks are still willing to lend. But you can also look at that and say, <laughs> everybody's savings is tapped out and and if, if this is the beginning of something significant, I mean, it's it's way higher than, than anything back here. Um, the consumer is pretty well spent. And if you look at it that way, it's a good time for the Fed to cut rates. If you look at it like, nah, the consumer's fine. Obviously, they're taking on more debt. Uh, then, you know, that that's goes against the idea of cutting rates. We shall see. Small business optimism report. Huge move down in August. Um, the lowest of the past three months. The the problem is historically high inflation remains the top issue for small business owners. So if historically high inflation is the top issue, that makes it harder for the Fed to cut rates because when cutting rates is inflationary, uh, keeping rates higher is what pushes inflation down. So the small business community is saying that Inflation is too high. That's that's their biggest problem. Um, so again, that goes against the idea of too much rate cutting. Okay, so we had this recent Facebook post. Um, this is actually, so we, we put up this screenshot every week, and what it is, 
is what the market did that week, right? What the, the TSP funds did for the week. The G fund always stays the same because essentially it doesn't move that much. And all we did was divide out, um, I can't remember if we used three and a half percent or 4% or whatever. So it would go up basically that much every week. It's not an exact number, but the other ones are what happened with those indexes. So C fund, SPX is ticker symbol, S and P 500. The S fund is DWCPF is the Dow Jones total composite stock market index. I fund is EFA, Europe, Asia, Far East index. And the F fund is the AGG, the aggregate bond index. So every week we put this up and it's just a snapshot of what happened on the market that week. So that was last week. And here's a couple of the comments that we got from that, right? So the first person says, I'm hiding in the G fund. Now, C fund was down 4.25%, right? S fund's down over 5%. I fund down over 3%. So it was a big down week last week. So I'm hiding in the G fund. Okay, this person says, you're not making, you're not making any money and you're losing buying power through inflation if, you, if you're in the G fund. Which, okay, C, C fund will go back even higher. It, it may, right? It certainly may. It probably will at some point go back higher. Could very well happen this week. Could go back higher. Um, so then this person says, okay, I might try getting back in a few weeks. I plan on retiring in a few months. I'm retiring in a few months and I have my eye on it. Okay. This person says, I'd rather not lock in the losses, right? I'm not retiring until December, 2025. So you got one person retiring in a few weeks, the next person retiring in about, what, 14 months. Okay. This is the S&P 500, the C fund, from 2000 to 2013. So if, let's just throw it out there as a possibility, right? Let's say the, we are somewhere in this neighborhood right now, let's just say. Say we're at a top because we don't know. But let's say we, we are at a top. It took from the top in 2000, the market comes down 50%, gets back up, in 2007, to the prior high, drops 55%, and then comes back up, and to get back above where you were in 2000, it took 14 years, right? From 2000 to 2013. It took 14 years to get back to where you were. So I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying if I was looking at this and I'm going to retire in A, a few months, or B, you know, 14 months, I would be concerned where we are right now and just not, not concerned that I wouldn't be invested in stocks, but be concerned, meaning I would want to know what actually is happening. Um, is this a time in, in the economy where I should just go all in in the C fund and everything's going to be fine? Or is this a time where I, I need to pay attention to what's going on? Okay. So how would you answer that question? Is now a time where I should pay attention to what's going on? So I took the same chart and overlaid the recession areas during that time, okay, is the green. And this red line is the Fed funds rate. So this is when the Fed is raising or lowering rates, okay? We know the Fed is going to start cutting rates this week. So we don't know by how much, okay? So let's say we're back here in 2000. That was the top of the rate, the, the rate cutting cycle. You can see that line wiggles a little bit. They moved, you know, moved around a little bit and they really started cutting right there. So the market is topping, right? It's going through this topping process. Rates are staying basically flat. Market starts falling, rates start falling. We go into recession, right? All the way along here, you can see when rates are falling, the market's going down. Once they stop, they stop falling. That's when stocks start going back up, right? When they start cutting, stocks start falling. When they stop cutting, <laughs> stocks are going up. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, if right now we are in an, 
in a time period when they're, we know they're about to begin a rate cutting cycle. And this is what happens during rate cutting cycles. So this is not an exact timing tool. The market can, can continue to go up for some amount of time. But generally speaking, when the Fed is cutting rates, the S&P is going down. When the Fed is, stops that rate cutting cycle and starts moving, rates start going up, the stock market's going up. So all I'm saying is now might be a, a, a time to pay attention and go, okay, where are we in the cycle? And does it make sense to put my, bury my head in the sand and, and hope for the best? Okay. So what actually does happen when the Fed cuts rates? This one goes back to 1990. So the Fed had started this, this rate cutting cycle. It was a pretty shallow recession, right? This is an, it's not logarithmic, so you can't really tell um, from this chart how much that, that decline was in the stock market right there. Um, but the market was down, rates were coming down. Once rates stabilized, we're good. This 1995, we didn't have a recession, but we started a rate cutting cycle here. And that actually began the tech boom, right, that ultimately terminated here in 2000 at the top of the tech bubble. But this is uh, Greenspan, <laughs> Alan Greenspan doing all kinds of financial engineering in here. So this is an example where they started cutting rates and the market went up. Could that happen this time? Absolutely, it's a possibility, right? It happened before, it could happen again, there you go. This one right here in 98 was a specific response. The Fed cut rates because long-term capital management, which was one of the biggest hedge funds in the world, collapsed and it, it threatened to bring down the whole system. And so the market did um, collapse, but it was a... It wasn't like a, a systemic thing. They, they, they kept that, they prevented that from happening uh, by lowering rates. But that was a, this rate cut was a response to, to a specific thing that was happening um, with one company. So it wasn't really like, a, like the great financial crisis or the, or the whole tech bubble popping. It was, it was m more like one specific thing. So those are kind of two, two different examples. This one, um, the econ the, the, Economy picked up when the Fed started cutting rates. The market moves higher. That's great. This one was to address a specific event in 1998. And then the next two we kind of already talked about, right? Once the Fed starts cutting rates, the market's going down. When they stop cutting rates, the market stabilizes. Rates go up. Market goes up. Uh, so basically the, whole, the point of this whole thing Generally speaking, when the Fed is cutting rates, you do not want to be in the stock market. It's not an exact timing tool. Um, it can definitely still go up a little bit in the short term, but in the not very long term, it's not a good idea to be in the stock funds. Okay. So where are we right now? So we're, this is September, October are the two most volatile months of the year. Um, you can see these huge price swings we've had this is a weekly chart, right? Huge price swings we've had versus even any of the big weeks back here in 2022, whether up or down. Um, we've had some really volatile weeks for the past couple of months. You got declining relative strength as price is, you know, trying to get above that. We talked about this before. This is the 1618 extension level from the top in 22 to October 22. If you use the Fibonacci tool and you extend it up to 1.618, we got all kinds of, re one, two, three, four, five weeks of, uh, of getting rejected at that level. And this week, now we're bumping up against it again, but in an environment <coughs> of lowering um, relative strength. So is it possible that relative strength pits, picks back up and we break through this level and the market keeps moving higher. Yes, it's a possibility, but I would want to see price prove it before I bought into it. S Fund. Today, S Fund is actually doing really well, way outperforming the C Fund or, or anything else so far today. Um, and that we got a lot of support at that 50 line in relative strength uh, while this has been consolidating sideways, while price has been consolidating. So, it's possible, and we talked about if uh, if we are getting a soft landing, if, we, if they're not worried about recession until next year, 
um, the S fund should do better as the Fed cuts rates. So if the Fed cuts rates by, you know, 50 basis points, you could see the S fund jump for sure. And if it can clear above this, this level, it, it can keep going until, unless and until unemployment gets bad uh, and then it rolls over. I fund as of earlier today, again, it's, it's trying to get back up to that 82 level. Um, we had resistance at 82 three times back here in 2021. We've had it a bunch of times in 2024. Had a little bit of a breakout, attempted breakout in August and uh, rolled back over. So still trying to get above that level. Until we get above, until we get a weekly close up here above 82, the I fund is just really risky. And the F fund still is is doing great. I mean, you don't get the same kind of performance in the F fund, but you also get a whole lot less risk. And we have this left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And we, we've broken out through this neckline, um, which is basically the bottom of this support resistance channel. And now we're kind of out of the, as of this week, if we can stay up there, we're out of that support resistance channel. So the F fund still looks good. You know, it's pushing overbought levels uh, on relative strength, but it still looks fine. So that is where we are. Questions? Questions? That's a lot packed into a pretty quick show. Um, yeah. One big takeaway from this week, if you're still listening, <laughs> now is not the time to put your head in the sand. Right? Is that what I said? Is that what I, said? I thought I said that a couple times. You, you did. I, w- I wanted to like Oy. pound the desk, right? Because here we are in some of the historically most volatile you know, parts of the year. We've got an election coming up. Uh, summer's over, right? You know, for, for most people, right? This is, we're, we're back in the swing of things. Kids are back in school, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like now is not the time to get distracted. If you're, if you're in the game, if you, you have money in the stock market, regardless of how you have it in there, particularly in your TSP, now is not the time to put your head in the sand. It, that does not mean you, you know, sell everything and go to the G fund. No, absolutely not. Uh, but what you got to do is be watching this show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, shoot it to them in the, uh, shoot it, Shoot them to us in the comments section, uh, wherever you find the video. If there's no comments section, you can email them at s- to support at gromatsp.com. Hope you guys have a great week, and it's good to be back in the studio. We will Yipper. see you guys next week. Out of here.